Hey guys, so um, in videos that I've been recording on inversions in the past few weeks, there's a concept that I've kind of been taking for granted that it's dawned on me recently that I shouldn't, which is when we talk about inversions, we've usually been talking about them as basically having a similar structure to tangles, which on the surface seems like a kind of foregone assumption. I mean, if you were to draw them out like they're knots on a piece of paper, clearly the steps that you go through in the arrangement of the poi heads in relation to the kind of cradle that your arms and shoulders create is identical. The only thing that's different is the point at which the contact happens. When we have that contact happen at mid-tether, um, clearly it's a tangle. When that contact happens at the wrists or the hands, clearly it comes out looking like an inversion, right? Okay. So let's take another proposition that I threw out there several videos ago, that when we talk about atomics, we can really talk about there being four different arrangements by which we can clash together the, uh, I called it the up shadow and the down shadow of, uh, of, of each of the poise movement, right? So for example, if I'm going to go into a crane, I am clashing together an up shadow and a down shadow essentially in same time such that the poi can never run into each other, right? And likewise, if I switch the direction of one, you know, same kind of situation. This is our butterfly right here. If I switch it to split time, I wind up with what we called an atom. And if I switch the direction of one, I'm now clashing an up shadow against a down shadow in split time, and I wind up with a tangle. This is the only atom from which a tangle is absolutely inevitable, right? In fact, I think it's the only atom from which you can get a tangle. Okay, so here's the interesting thing about this. Um, if I were to go into an inversion in an atomic kind of context with one hand going horizontal and one hand going vertical, there's something very, very subtle about this that I missed for a very long time, but I knew that something didn't quite feel right, and here's what it is. When I enter into my inversion, um, I'm coming at it from a place where my left hand is the vertical plane, and it's, of course, going forwards. My right hand is going horizontal, and from above, it looks like it's going clockwise, right? Okay, so I enter into it by crossing my left hand over to the right side of my right hand, which, of course, means that it has to go around my right arm. Let's say my right arm isn't there. Let's say, for example, it's over on my right hand side, so I can get my left hand on the right side of my right hand without having to worry about that arm being in the way. And if I do that, guess what? This is not a tangle, this is an atom. How do we know this? Because it's not tangling. If, on the other hand, I put my left hand on the left side of my right hand, like so, I do get a tangle. Hence, the position that I'm entering into that atomic inversion from is not a tangle. The position is an atom. Okay, but isn't vertical plane slightly different? In fact, not. There, it, it, there, the initial piece of movement here is actually camouflaging the fact that a vertical inversion is working exactly the same way. That is, um, let's say for the sake of argument that I'm going to enter into uh, a tangle in this vertical place. I am, of course, doing it from an atom that is a tangle. That is, the up shadow and the down shadow of the poi are clashing against each other, and once I arrange them spatially such that the chords can overlap, they do overlap, yes? But something different happens when I try to initiate an inversion. Namely, once again, I switch my left hand from being on the left side of my right hand to being on the right side of my right hand. And that actually changes the atom that I'm working inside of. For example, once again, if I set it up such that my, uh, my right hand is over on the right hand side of my body, and I'm going to go ahead and cross my left hand over, once again, I wind up in the atom. I wind up in a position where the two up shadows are overlapping each other, and they're doing so in split time. So they cannot possibly tangle from this arrangement. They can only tangle if my left hand is on the left side of my right hand. Okay, so am I saying then that tangles and inversions are not actually the same thing after all? Not entirely. What I'm saying is I think they have fundamentally different structures. What I'm saying is that it seems to me as though we could think of a tangle as being a knot that we enter into from a tangle atom, whereas an inversion can be thought of as a tangle knot that we enter into, or excuse me, <laughs> the 
tangle is a knot that we enter into from a tangle, and an inversion is a tangle is is a knot that we enter into from an atom. Yeah. Here's the thing. I don't know if this is diagnostic of the difference between these two types of movements, or it's just a byproduct of some other process that we haven't really described just yet. So I'm throwing this out there to you guys to see if you can find any inversions that we can actually enter into from a tangle atom slash quark, or any tangles that we can enter into from an atom style quark. Yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for watching, and uh, have a great week. Peace.